You cannot build up and manifest good things and tear down at the same time. It is very difficult to, it's you're either up, down, right, left, whatever it is. If you're trying to build something up and manifest blessings for yourself, it is very difficult to tear down, to go back and fight back via destructive magic or destructive work is tearing down. So if you go tear their stuff down, you're tearing your stuff down too. And that's not what you want to do. So defense is the better measure. The next thing I want to note is don't, underestimate any woman please put that in your notes i don't care what race she is i don't care if she's chinese caucasian uh american indian indigenous black whatever don't underestimate any woman i don't care what age she is i don't care how weak you think the woman is i don't care how pitiful you think the woman is i don't care if she doesn't have any initiations into priesthood i want you to please take note and remember remember what i tell you when i say this earnestly as i look into well i'm not looking into your eyes but i'm looking right at you and i want to tell you don't underestimate any woman you do not have to be initiated to be a witch please put that down you do not have to be initiated to be a witch and there's no initiation into witchhood because witch is a being. It is not a thing you initiate to. But not all witches are priestesses. Let me give you that. Okay? So there are people who are first ladies in the church and they don't even know that they're witches. They can say, I plead the blood of Jesus. And the biggest witches you'll ever see in your life. And they don't even know that's what they are. Powerful women. They come from a bloodline of powerful women. I know a gospel, um, a gospel group of... Uh, uh, powerful witches they don't even know that's what they are they got that heavy anointing on them and they straight soul out pleading the blood of jesus witches so i want you to note i don't care if it's the strictest muslim woman with her entire face covered with hijab um i don't care if it's the meditating hindu woman a buddhist monk whoever it is don't underestimate a woman because she doesn't practice african spirituality or nature uh magic or juju or wicca and all these other things don't underestimate her I don't care if it's the blondest haired woman who's like, hi, everybody, everything's great. Don't underestimate her. Don't underestimate her. I'm telling you, a lot of people, they get spiritual attacks from people and they think it's, it's a big old spiritual voodoo woman bully sitting on her porch throwing a black cat bone or something at you or putting you in a jar. And it, it could be the person that you least expected. It could be an Uber driver that you went off on and you underestimated that particular woman. You'd be so surprised. It's not always the person you think it is that's, that may be uh, sending a negative thought your way. So be careful who you underestimate. Another thing is too, uh, some men are known as also. In Ifa cosmology, also, O-S-O -O, is a male witch or wizard. Don't underestimate wizards. There are some men who have inherited the power and the gift from their mothers, and they're known as also. Don't underestimate them. Uh, they're often spiritually oriented. They often have a lot of Scorpio on their chart, but not necessary, but don't underestimate them. Some of those men have inherited powers from their mothers. The next thing is, too, as far as diagnosis and cure, getting back to what I'm saying about spirit. Say you want to enlist your ancestors. Maybe Aunt Lily B doesn't want to help you with a defense matter because someone's interfering with your marriage. Um, maybe it's your uncle who you don't like who's about that life and he's willing to go out there and help you, an ancestral uncle. So you, first of all, if you're not going to go to a diviner, you need to be able to go to your ancestors and find a yes or no way of figuring out which ancestor is willing to help you, number one. Because you need to know which spirit is going to defend you. Because you may just say, hey, ancestors, that's just very general. You could have a hundred thousands of ancestors. Which one in particular is going to defend you on a matter? And also, do they specialize in that? So say, for instance, you know, I need somebody to help me move into my house. Say, for instance, I just knock on your door and I say, hey, Lisa, come on, come help me move my, my furniture. What if you say, girl, I'm on my way to get my hair done. I got to go to class in a few minutes. I don't have time to help you. Same thing in the spirit world. So you can go knock on your ancestor's door and say, hey, uh, through tapping on the stick. Because when you tap your ancestor's stick, that's like knocking on the door when you tap that stick on the ground. So just like you don't want somebody just knocking on your door telling you to come help, asking you to come help, and you're on your way to go get your hair done, and you're going to go do laundry, and somebody come knocking on your door just asking you to do something, they haven't built a relationship with you, they have not checked to see if you are available or willing to do it. The same thing with the spirit world. That is why divination is also important because divination will tell you which spirit is going to help you on the matter that specializes in it and can defend you. The spirits do not work for free. 
Okay, Uncle Joe. Okay, Grandma, Grandma Bessie. What do you need from me to do this work? You have to pay the spirits to do the work. That could be a cup of coffee. Um, it could be some cola nuts. It can be a basket of fruit. It can be maybe helping a family member with their homework. Um, it could be, they tell you, you go ahead and you finish college. You do that and I'm going to help you with this matter. Whatever it is, you need to figure out what those ancestors want from you. Or that spirit God wants from you. La Malama, a gypsy spirit, whatever, Congo spirit. You need to figure out what, how you're going to pay them to do the work. Because when you pay them for the work, you're giving them the energy to do the work. A lot of people, they will try things for spiritual defense and it won't work because they put it in the wrong doggone place. First of all, they didn't pay the spirit. They didn't ask the spirit. The spirit's willing to do it. They didn't see what it takes for that particular spirit to do the work. What is the energetic exchange required? And where in nature do, do, do you take that energetic exchange? It must go where it's supposed to go. It's very, very important. Let's talk about prevention. Let's talk about prevention. What are the measures or of prevention for this type of work? Because some way, somehow, I want you to realize if you've been attacked spiritually or some type of way, please believe some way, somehow. I'm not saying it's your fault. I'm not saying you did anything to make the evil person mad. But some way, somehow, your ori or your aura has been opened to the attack in some type of way. Please realize that. I want you to realize if you find yourself in spiritual warfare or spiritual attack, I want the first the question I want you to ask is, what did I do to attract this? What did I do to open myself up to this particular type of energy? Please take note, it's pen and paper time. What is it that I did for this to be the case? I don't want you to be in victim mode. Like, what did I do to deserve this? I'm such a good person. I don't mess with nobody because they used to be my prayer all the time. We're going to talk about why they messing with you. Why they effing with you? Why are they testing you? Why? What made you a mark? What, what attracted that energy to you? First thing is, if you get somebody that's low vibrational enough to be miserable enough to want to do some sort of harm to you, and you're not bothering them, maybe if it's through envy or uh, competition or they want something that you have or anything like that, just some sort of injustice. If you are susceptible to that energy, and it's miserable people who are bullying you over and over again, or maybe even one time. What area of your life are you miserable? I guarantee you, like attracts like. What area of your life are you miserable? This is the sky. This is the clear blue sky. This is the little bird, just happy. This is high vibrational energy right here. This is the low vibrational, third dimensional, sub third dimensional energy. This is the pig pen, where all the wicked people are. That, that are wishing you bad, the miserable people. If they can throw mud at you all the way up here, then you're not all the way up there. Somewhere in your life, I don't care how good of a person you are, you might be a good person that's supposed to be up here. But some way, somehow, this little bird ended up flying low enough to where they throwing mud at you, and it's it's a lot, and you're being you're being accessible. You made yourself accessible to the mud throwing. Because if you were vibrating higher enough, they wouldn't be able to hit you. I don't care how much in the third dimension you are. Some way, somehow, I want you to ask yourself, what did I do to attract the pigs throwing the mud at me? And how did I get myself low enough to where they could hit me? We're going to talk about that. So you're an innocent bird. You're minding your business. You're doing you. You're praising the Lord and all that good stuff. And they hit you with this bad energy, huh? You get hit with this energy. The number one thing is, remember what I asked you. What area of your life are you miserable? What area of your life are you miserable? Are you in a miserable job? Are you, in an, are you in a miserable relationship? What area of your life are you miserable? Um, do you dwell on emotions of loneliness, resentment? Who are you mad at? Are you mad at a father or a mother or ex that left? If you stay in that energy all the time, the more you focus on that, the closer you get to the pig pen. Holding on to resentment, if you're holding on to unforgiveness, if you're holding on to hatred, it's making your body acidic to where it's, it's kind of weakening your wings to where you're flying low enough for them to be able to hit you some type of way. And that's something that we have to be honest with ourselves about. So I ask you again, what area of your life are you miserable or unhappy or resentful? If you're not miserable, unhappy or resentful, I want you to ask yourself, what is it that you are eating in your diet to make you susceptible? Because I guarantee you, if you're doing everything you can to make your heart light as a feather like my aunt, the less their spiritual work is going to work on you. The higher you vibrate, the higher you elevate, the more positive you think, the more affirmations that you give. Because I wasn't, I'm telling you, I was a very resentful, angry 
person. And I was like, why are these people messing with me? I'm not doing anything to anybody because my, my little birdie was flying too low. So that's why I could get hit all the time because like attracts like. I may not have been miserable in their type of way, but I had other miseries in other ways. So you got to be honest with yourself. So when they tell you to forgive certain people or let it go, think of it as a karmic charge off. You know, like on your credit report, when you, when you get a ding on your credit report and they just write it off after seven years, baby, if it's been over seven years, write it off. Because I'm telling you, it's lowering you and it's not worth it anymore. Um, what Spirit told me about forgiveness and resentment is... When you hold on to that stuff too long, even if it's justified and the person deserves your hatred or resentment, it's like you put yourself in the corner. You put yourself in timeout. They're not in timeout. They're running on with their life. So you got to come out of timeout. Because as long as you stay in timeout, the people that don't like you, it could be the main people who are actually doing the work against you that you're uh, resentful against. If you don't get yourself out of timeout by letting all that stuff go, and it's easier said than done. Sometimes it takes years. The, the, when, when the years pass and you heal, you're going to go higher to where the work isn't going to work anymore. So what I'm saying is, if it's not resentment, misery in some situation in your life, or you're bored as heck. Boredom energy is like stagnant energy. Because when you're moving and flowing and you're excited and you want to get out the bed in the morning, then if you're moving and flowing, then they might miss you when they throw the mud at you. But if you're stagnant, if you're in a stagnant energy, that can also cause them to hit you. Because when you're standing still... Your target, but they don't hit a moving target as easier. So if you're stagnant in your life, that also makes you susceptible to spiritual attack. And keep in mind, not, not everybody that's wishing bad on you knows about witchcraft. It could be somebody in the church just speaking against you and affecting your life in some type of way or casting their eyes on you. People who have the biggest curses and the hardest curses to remove from their life or people or children whose mothers have spoken against them. You ain't going to be nothing and you just like your daddy and and you just keep messing up and you just a mess and you dusty. If you're saying things like that to your children, you're putting a curse on your children. If your parents have verbally abused you and they told you that you're not going to do this, I don't think that's going to work for you. And that's a spell. Do you know the strong, once again, the strongest spells to remove are not your enemy spells. It's the spells that come off the tongue and the eyes of your mother. She may even be meaning well and love you and have good intentions. But the hardest spell work to break is the spell of the mother. Because remember, what does Iami mean? It means my mother. That is the most powerful energy, the witches. Your mother. The womb you come from has the power to bless or curse you. That's why it's very important. I don't care how toxic you may think she is. It is very important to get the blessing of your mother. You want your mother to speak life over you, hope and encouragement. You want to speak life, hope and encouragement over your children. Because even if you're in the best environment, it's not somebody that you don't forgive. You're in a good environment. You're around good company. You, you know, whatever, even isolated if you want to, which is not good either. But if the mother, if your mother is toxic and speaking against, speaking against your life and your endeavors, or even if she's not speaking, if she's thinking, mm, that ain't going to go well for her. I don't know about her moving to that city. I don't know about him going to that college. I don't know about that person. That can, that can make your little birdie go a little lower. So remember, the mother's tongue is the most powerful curse. The mother's uh, thoughts or doubts about what you are doing are powerful. How do you overcome those things? First of all, you let your mother know, if you're able to, if she's alive, that you need her blessing. You need her encouragement. Also, if you have that type of mother, you want to be careful what you tell your mother about your goals and plans. You want to do things first before you, um, um, you want to accomplish things first. Then go back and say, hey, mom, I did this. You don't want to say, I'm about to, I'm fixing to, I want to, I need to. You're going to say, I did this. Because if she knows about anything you're doing and she's that type of mother, you want to be careful how much she knows. Even sitting down on the bus, if you ride the city bus or the subway, you need to be cleaning your clothes where you sat. Because it may not have been something that happened to you, but the fact that you sat in that energy uh, on that plane, on that bus, on that subway, in that Uber, you don't know what you're picking up when you do that. Okay? So keep those certain things in mind. 